31, I want to take some time and graph some polynomials with you. And I'm looking for basic shape here. We'll start talking about traits that are interesting to us. And I really want to focus in on the X and Y intercepts and their, their multiplicities. So the first thing I want to talk about, all right, and I want to refer to that trait table that you could print out is that our domain is always going to be all real numbers. So for these polynomials, there are no fractions, there are no radicals, and there are no logarithms. So the domain's always going to be all real numbers. And we've been practicing in the last few examples how to find the x and y intercepts, and specifically what the x-intercepts and their multiplicities refer to. In a previous section, we also talked about end behavior and the arrows, or you could use the the x going to negative infinity and positive infinity symbols. So I'm going to review that up just so that we can start to feel out all of the traits in this column. All right, so with that, let's see how we're doing. So first of all, if I take a look at this, I could multiply all of this out. I could square x minus 3, I could cube x plus 2, and then I could multiply everything together, but it's really not worth it. If you think about the leading term, and the leading coefficient that goes with it, but the lead term. In this factor, the lead term is x, and in this factor, the lead term is x. Now, x will eventually get cubed here, and x will eventually get squared here. So this is ish, and I'm gonna put the approximation symbol, like thinking about x cubed times x squared, which is x to the fifth. And I mention this because I wanna think about end behavior. End behavior, remember back from our previous section, if we have an odd degree polynomial with a positive lead coefficient, we have some end behavior, and I'm just gonna write the arrows for right now. We know that the right end is up and the left end is down. That's the end behavior. So we know that when I go to graph this, this end is gonna come up, this end is gonna come down. If you remember, we could write this, let me see, can I get it in here? You could write this, I'll, I'll squeeze it in here. You could say as x goes to negative infinity, f of x goes to negative infinity. And then you could say as x goes to positive infinity, f of x goes to positive infinity. You're more than welcome to use that, that infinity notation. And again, it's great to get used to it because you will see it in a calculus class. But I told you, I'm gonna lazy out and there are my arrows. All right, so with that, that's great, but we still have some more information we can glean. All right, so in terms of the y-intercept, if I wanted to figure out the y-intercept, I would let x equal zero. Well, if I was gonna do f of zero, that would be two cubed times negative three squared, so that would ultimately be eight times nine, which would be 72. So I have a pretty large y-intercept, let me write it here, at 0, 0,72, and I'll keep that in mind when I go to scale my axes. All right, the other thing I'm seeing are my x-intercepts. They will occur whenever I have a factor that zeroes out. Well, when does x plus 2 zero out? It zeroes out at negative 2, 0. When does x minus 3 zero out? It zeroes out at 3, 0. So I have some x-intercepts. And I want you to take note of their multiplicities. This one is odd, this one is even. So what that means is I should cross the x-axis at negative two, but I should touch the x-axis at three. All right, so I haven't used my calculator at all yet. I'm just looking at this equation and crunching a few numbers, and, and I have a pretty good idea already of what my graph looks like. So let me scale and label my axes. Now in the x direction, I can keep these numbers what I usually do, where I put 10 over here, but I need a pretty large y variable or y axis. So I'm gonna make each of these worth 10 units. So this is actually going to be 100 here. So my y-intercept is 0, 0,72. Let me head up to it. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 72, somewhere in there. I have an x-intercept at negative two, zero. I have an x-intercept at 3, 0. All right, so let's start to think about this, right? I'm going to cross the x-axis here, so I'm going to cross through, but I'm going to touch here. And when I think about my end behavior, right, I need a right end up and a left end down. So I can start to see the path of my graph. 
I'm gonna just trace it here, right? I can see I'm headed up, up, up. I cross the x-axis. I head to this y-intercept, and then I scooch back down towards this next x-intercept, but I just touch the x-axis and head back up again. So that's a pretty good idea for my graph, so let me fill that in. I think I'm just heading down this way, set it up, 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 comes here, touches the x-axis, and bounces again. That's a sketch. I'm not saying this is 100% accurate, but that's the general shape of this thing. And I can check it with my calculator, keeping in mind that I just want the shape to be around the correct, or pretty close to correct. It doesn't have to be exact. So let's do in parentheses x plus two cubed times x minus three squared. I'm gonna hit zoom six. And let's see, I'm heading up. Oh, and it's, you can barely see it bounce, right? It bounces. I don't know how high up I get, but I think I'm gonna get pretty high up because keep in mind your y-intercept was 72. So let me just extend my window. I'll go um, negative 100 to 100 in the y direction. A lot of times I like to just extend it by a factor of 10. All right, so let's hit graph, see what we got. There, oh, I still can't quite see the top. That, that max must be just a little bit higher. Let me do 125. See if I capture it. There we go. So you see I'm heading up, up, up. I cross through the x-axis, I touch the x-axis, and I head back up again. Now there was a little like leveling out here that I don't have on my graph. I wouldn't have known to put that there. When you get into calculus, and we're not there yet, but when you get into calculus, they will show you ways to identify that little leveling off. All right, something gets activated in calculus and we can find all of those traits as well. All right, so with that, let's try and graph this next function, see how we're doing. So again, as I look at this, I've got an x, an x to the fourth, and an x to the cubed. So this is basically like 1 fourth x to the 7. All right, so my lead term would be 1 fourth times x to the 7. All right, I also want to take note that I have an odd power here, so I know I'm going to cross the x-axis here, I'm going to touch the x-axis here, and I'm going to cross the x-axis here. I notice that. All right, let's think about our y-intercept. If I was going to figure out my y-intercept if x was 0, well this is actually nice, it's going to just straight up be 0 because I have that factor of x there. Alright, for my x-intercepts, how many do I have? It looks like I have one at 0, 0, I have one at 1, 0, and I have one at negative 3, 0. So with all of that, I'm going to go label and scale my axes. Oh, I know what I forgot to address, end behavior. Again, I have an odd degree polynomial, and I have a positively coefficient, so my end behavior is still right arrow up, left arrow down. Okay, now let me go through. We've got 0, 0, I've got 1, 0, and I've got negative 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. All right, I've got left end down, right end up, so let's see what we're supposed to do. At negative 3, I'm supposed to cross the x-axis, Right? And then I'm heading down to zero, where I should cross the x-axis, right? And then I should, why am I flaking for just a little bit? Oh, I know why I have this wrong. Is anyone noticing my error? Probably not, since I'm the teacher. I was just saying, like, this doesn't quite work the way I want it to. That's because I am off here. Do you see that this is one? four and three, this should have been x to the eighth. All right, so I was incorrect here. I can't add my own powers, but I had a degree one, a degree four, and a degree three, so I apologize. All right, but I was catching myself and noticing that my graph wasn't gonna match. So actually my end behavior is both ends up. That will work. Okay, so let's try both ends up and then get this to work. All right, so here we go. So if both ends are up, that is a different game. All right, so I'm gonna head down here, and at negative three, I'm gonna cross the x-axis. 
All right, I'm gonna head over to zero where I'm gonna cross the x-axis. I'm gonna come back to one where I touch the x-axis and then I head up. All right, so my graph should look something like that. Now, I'm gonna make my little w a, a better looking graph, but I just want you to see, right? I should cross, cross, touch, and then head up. All right, so let's make this work. So I'm going to head down here. This probably won't do much. And then, and then like so. All right. And then let me go ahead and make this 10 and 10. And again, this is just ish, right? It's not a perfect graph. I'm going to check it now on my calculator. A great check just to say, hey, do I have the correct graph? So we have 1 fourth x times x minus 1. Um, x minus 1 to the 4th, and then x plus 3 cubed. All right, let me hit zoom 6 and see if I have something close to what I graphed. Yeah, actually, it's not too far off. It looks like this goes much lower than I originally thought, which is fine. But still, I'm heading down. I cross, cross, touch, and head back up. And just so we can see it, I'm going to zoom in at the origin just so you can see what's happening here, right? I cross and then I touch, all right? And you can't quite see the end because I zoomed in. If I wanna see the other side of it, let me go to negative four here, and you should be able to see really close to that x-axis. Oh, excuse me, really close to the origin. So cross, cross, touch, all right? And if I lowered the y min, I'd be able to see that, that minimum value in there. All right. So with that, we've got a couple of graphs under our belt. We're going to try another one in example six, and I will see you in a bit. Bye.